Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about moment of inertia, which is really just the rotational equivalent of mass. So in linear motion you have mass, in rotational motion you have moment of inertia. You can think of moment of inertia as rotational mass or rotational inertia. The name is tricky, moment of inertia, it's sort of a name from engineering, um, but don't get confused, it's just rotational mass. Let's check it out. So you might remember that when we solved motion problems, which were those problems we solved with the three to four motion equations or kinematic equations, um, those equations didn't have a mass in it, right? So they did not depend on mass. But once you moved into energy problems or force problems, dynamics problems, um, mass was important. So here's kinetic energy is half mv squared. Gravitational potential energy has a mass. Force, F equals ma, that has a mass as well. So before we can talk about energy in rotation and forces in rotation, we have to talk about the mass in rotation because it's a little different. Again, linear motion, mass, and rotational motion, we have this new thing that we're going to talk about. I want to quickly remind you that mass is the amount of resistance to linear acceleration. Linear acceleration is A. Mass, M, is resistance to A, and we call that inertia. When you resist acceleration, you're resisting change in velocity. Resisting change is inertia. Inertia means you want things to keep going the way they're going. You want to resist change. I can show you real quick how this looks like. Sum of all forces equals MA. Um, I can rewrite this as A equals sum of all forces over M. So notice that the greater my mass, the smaller my A, right? So the more mass I have, the more resistance I have. So the more mass I have, the more resistance I have. And remember, resistance is inertia. The more mass, the more inertia. So we say that mass is the quantity of inertia. This is old stuff. Mass is the quantity of inertia. Well, it's going to be the same thing in rotation. In rotation, the only difference is that in rotation, the amount of resistance depends on mass and depends on something else. In linear motion, it depends only on mass, but in rotation, it depends on mass and it also depends on distance to axis. So if an object spins um, at a distance of 10, it's going to have a different resistance than if it spins at a distance of 20 from its axis of rotation. Okay, So if you're going like this, you have less inertia than if you're going like this. Okay, So this combination of mass and distance to axis is what we call moments of inertia. And it's the amount of rotational inertia you have. Moment of inertia takes the letter I. You can think of this as just inertia, right? And it's the rotational equivalent of mass. Cool? And again, you can think of it as rotational inertia or rotational mass. Cool? So depending on the, the kind of problem you have, if you have motion, linear motion, or any kind of linear problem, you use mass. If you have any kind of rotational problem, you're going to use rotational mass, which is called moment of inertia. Cool. There's two types of objects and two types of problems you're going to see. You can have point masses. Um, again, a point mass is a tiny little object that goes around a circle of radius um, R. And we're going to say that the mass itself has no radius. Okay. So remember, this distance here is little r. Little r is the distance. Um, big R is the radius. So it's a tiny object that doesn't really have a radius. It doesn't have a volume. Usually you hear something like a small object. Um, and then the other type is when you have a shape or a rigid body. These are uh, like a cylinder with a radius or something. So the radius here is not zero. And the reason I put shape is because it's usually going to, the problem is usually going to tell you what kind of shape this is. It's a solid cylinder. If it says it's a solid cylinder, you know it's one of these guys and not a point mass. Cool? Now, if you have a point mass, the moment of inertia is given by an equation, which is mr squared. m is the mass of that object. And r, again, is the distance to the axis of rotation. Okay, Distance to axis. All right? 
and if it's a rigid body, I will be given by a table lookup, a table lookup. What do I mean by that? Well, your textbook has a table of moments of inertia, and it's gonna say for a solid cylinder, the moment of inertia, for example, is, let me write it here, um, for a solid cylinder, the moment of inertia is half mr squared. So this will be given to you. Most professors don't require you to memorize this. They'll give this to you um, in some way. All right, so look through your book, find a table. It's got some pretty shapes. Um, something like this, I pulled this from Wikipedia. It shows you the shape um, and it shows where it's rotating, okay? I wanna point out that if you spin here, if you spin this object at the end of the object, so imagine that you're spinning sort of like here, right, at this edge right here, so it's doing this, it's different than if you're spinning it in the middle like this. Notice how these equa equations are different. This is one over three, ml squared and this is 1 over 12 ml squared. It's because for moment of inertia, where you spin matters, okay? Um, one last point here is that the most moments of inertia will follow this general form here. It will be some fraction, like half or two-thirds or two-fifths or whatever, mr squared. In this case, um, this is a thin rod so what matters in the rod is not the r, not the radius of the rod, because it's very thin, so it's small, it's negligible, but it's the length of the rod. But even then you see that it's instead of mr squared, it's ml squared. So you should expect um, to see something like that, okay? So we're gonna do this quick example here, so you see how this works, and we'll do a practice problem. Um, it says a system is made of two small masses. The one on the left right here, it's this guy, has a mass of m, let's call it m left equals three and then mass on the right right here, m right equals four. And they are attached to the ends of a two meter long thin rod. So it's this guy right here, I'm gonna write it like this. Uh, length equals two meters. That is massless. So it's a thin rod that has no mass at all. And we wanna calculate the moment of inertia of the system if it spins about a perpendicular axis to the center of the rod. There's a lot of words here and you're gonna get used to this but I'm gonna start slowly here, okay? So I wanna know the moment of inertia, so I equals question mark, of the system, let me put a little system here, moment of inertia of the whole system. Um, if it spins, so it's spinning, about a perpendicular axis, you're gonna see this all the time, perpendicular axis. Perpendicular means 90 degrees, perp equals 90 degrees. This is, remember the symbol for perpendicular. Cool. Um, so what does it mean that it's a perpendicular axis? Well, here's the rod, right? Perpendicular axis means that it's making 90 degrees at the rod. So it looks like this. Cool? Like that. Now, this is also perpendicular because it's also making 90 degrees. So sometimes it's hard to tell which ones. So you have to be careful. So it says perpendicular axis through the center of the rod. So it means it's perpendicular, makes 90 degrees, and it goes like this. You could have a perpendicular axis or you can have a parallel axis. Parallel axis would look like this. It would go with the rod, but then the rod is just spinning around itself and that doesn't do anything, okay? So the axis will be like this through the middle, which means the rod is spinning around itself like this, okay? So it's a very visual uh, chapter, a very visual topic. Um, so I'm gonna draw it like this. And the idea is that this guy is spinning around itself like this, okay? The moment of inertia of a system is the sum of the individual uh, moments of inertia, okay? So we have three objects, but the rod has no mass. And look at the moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is either half mr squared, or if you're a shape, it looks like this. Both of these guys have masses. What it means is that if you, um, both of them, them require mass. So if you have no mass, you have no moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is rotational mass. If you have no regular mass, you have no rotational mass either. So what that means is that we're only gonna really have two guys here, I left plus I right, okay? So now we're gonna expand this. What is What goes here and what goes here? So what goes here and what goes here? Now, you have to decide, or you have to figure out, are these, uh, are these masses a tiny point mass, or are they sort of a, a bigger shape? And here it says two small masses, 
small is a hint that these are point masses, PM, point masses, PM, um, which means the equation is MR squared, okay? So there's two clues here. One, it says small, that's a dead giveaway. And the other one is it didn't indicate a shape. So if I tell you a small solid cylinder, it's still a rigid body because I, I said that it was a solid cylinder. Um, I gave you the shape. Here, I tell you it's small and I don't give you a shape. It's a point mass, okay? So what we're gonna write here is M of the left, um, R left squared, because that's the equation, M R squared. Same thing here, M R squared, but this is for the right, okay? So the masses are a three and a four, three and a four. So I like to set it up, oops, this is a two right there. I like to set it up this way. What I've done is I've written the mass here, mass here, this mass, this mass, and I've left a space for us to plug in the R's, okay? I left a space for us to plug in the R's. This is where you have to slow down, make sure you find the right number. Um, R is the distance between the object and its axis of rotation. So it's not the two, R is this. So this is R for the right ball uh, or right object, and this is R for the left object. The distances are one for both because it sits right down the middle. So it's gonna be one and one, okay? One square is just one, so the answer here is simply seven. Now let's talk about units because we haven't done that yet. Um, if you look at I equals MR squared, which is the I for a point mass, um, the units are gonna be kilograms because of the mass and meters squared because of the, the distance squared, distances in meters, okay? So it's gonna be seven kilograms meter squared, all right? Um, that's it for this one. Um, we, I wanna point out that we actually didn't use this table, right? We had a rod here. We didn't use this table because this rod didn't have a mass. If it had a mass, you, you, you would have used this equation right here, okay? You would have used this equation here. I'm gonna write here, but no mass. Sad face, so we didn't get to use it. But you would have used this one because it's spinning around its middle, middle point. Cool, that's it for this one. Let's keep going.